Hey guys, my name is Ben Forehand. I'm here with Worship Online, and we're going to be talking today about pick technique. Over the years, I've played in a lot of different bands, country bands, gospel bands, singer-songwriter, um, a lot of worship too, and I've noticed this thing with other musicians I meet, specifically other guitar players that I meet, where they, they ask me about single note lines, they ask me about... Um, playing over chord changes. Um, in most of the lessons I've taught, I see a common thing with guitar players who are wanting to get better, and it's they feel like they've hit a plateau. They feel like they've learned songs, they've learned riffs, um, and they can't really get out of this box. And usually, I find that it's in the right hand and left hand, and it's basic movements that kind of hang guys up. It hung me up for years. I was 22 years old before I took my first guitar lesson. And I remember my guitar teacher at uh, the music school I went to just kind of told me I didn't have an upstroke. And I didn't really know what he, he meant by that. But in, in the idea of alternate picking, is he could do stuff I couldn't. He said that the thing that would get me to this place is in getting an upstroke and working on alternate picking. So I want to spend a little bit of time just looking at um, how we hold the pick, how we move the pick, and how the left hand also frets notes. And it, it might seem really basic, but in, in my own practice and in my own growth as a guitar player, these were the things that were actually fundamental. Um, how to actually move them, how to actually like position them, and then what do I do in my practice time? How do I actually get better at this? So just really basic idea in holding the pick. Um, I like to keep it in between my thumb and my forefinger. And when I actually get to the strings, I try and make sure that it's the tip of the pick and not much more. So we can really barely see the tip on the front side of my pick here. And when I place it against the string, and as a practice technique, I don't always play this way, but as a practice technique, I just try and imagine an imaginary line at the bottom of my pick, pick up, my neck pickup. And um, that's where I'm going to be trying to place my pick for all six strings. And I want to make sure that when I get to a string, and just for instance, we're on the D string right here, I want to put the pick flat against it. And making this really simple um, approach. I can find out whether I have it kind of facing back or whether it's facing downward. And when I'm nice and flat, I want to get comfortable with what it's going to feel like in my right hand to pick that note. I also want to make sure I'm not leaning forward or leaning backward because it's going to mess with the sound. If I'm leaning too forward, it's going to have a very soft sound. And if I'm leaning backwards, I'm actually going to pick the string up before I play through it and it's going to pop which might be a cool sound, but it's not necessarily what I want to work on. So once that's in place, once I'm straight, once the pick tip is at the bottom of the string, I just want to gently press through it, down, up. And what we're looking for is a uniform sound. a nice attack on each, the down and the up. So if I don't have the pick flat, my downs and my ups are going to start to sound different. And you might not be able to tell it when they're spread far apart, but when I actually do like a repetitive down and up. down kind of has a softer feel and the up pulls back a little more. So really simply we want to correct that and uh, just go for something really consistent, almost robotic. It might not be the most musically pleasing, but in different sessions over the years I really started to notice early on when I'm playing lines, when I'm playing unison lines, especially on gospel music, unison lines with keyboard players, I started to feel like a, a bounce in the volume of my notes. And as I would play through these lines, some notes would be nice and clear and clean, and other notes were almost hidden. 
it's really where I started to see how how big this alternate picking thing is, um, just for the recording process. So when I can have them almost robotic, it's going to mean that as I play through my lines, I'm in control of how loud each note is. So another thing in the left hand, this also has a lot to do with it. I noticed that I had trouble in descending lines, meaning something that comes kind of from the high notes down to the low notes. And I realized that in the the ascending motion, I can get away with a lot. Because the, the bulk of my hand is on the bottom side of the neck. But, but coming back towards the low notes, I kind of have to reposition my hand. And if I'm really not watching it, I'm going to slow myself down with bad finger placement. So really simply, what I'm looking for is that my fingers come down into the fret, and I like to think of it as they come up, they come over, and then they come down. So I want each of them to kind of have an arc, a very like natural look, as I'm up, over, and then down into the note. And in doing this, I'm really letting the strength of my fingers make the fretting happen. And this is really kind of like on a keyboard when you're typing. It's almost like the same movement, where if I don't have the up, over, and down, and I'm kind of coming in where it's a little bit more flat, then I'm really using like my forearm to kind of make this motion. The guy that, that put me onto this would do this thing where he would kind of hold his forearm and just do the pulling down motion and I could see that the fingers in his forearm are kind of bouncing out where when he would touch the same spot and move his fingertips I didn't see his fingers bouncing out at all so the difference between pulling down and then pressing is way less movement inside my forearm which means that it's all inside my left hand and it takes less muscle to actually move my fingers faster so in being more efficient there, I can move wherever I need to unhindered and also not wear out in a 90 minute, you know, gospel night or, uh, you know, whatever style of music you're, you happen to be playing, you can just do it longer with less effort. So let's get into some left hand basic exercises. Most of you guys would know the minor pentatonic scale, and if you don't, I'll play through it. It's really simple. So as I'm playing through that, I want to make sure that I've got one finger per fret. I know that I can stretch it out and, and hit a lot of these with my ring finger, like if I wanted to play down this way. But for the purpose of strengthening my left hand, training my left hand to be more efficient, I want to make sure that I'm using one finger per fret. Um, later on this will make more sense. So right now we want to use the first finger, fourth finger, first finger, third finger. Switch back to the fourth finger here. 
So one of the things I see in, in guys that I teach, they're fine right here, but once they kind of get down to the, the plain strings of the guitar, this thing happens on the bottom side of their hand where a lot of times it'll kind of tuck in to where this part of their palm is making contact against the neck. And it's almost like these fingers are overextending themselves, trying to get these tips in order, but it's almost like there's a reverse movement, almost as if they're like stepping on top of your palm. So just one thing to point out while you're working through this at home, once you get to the plain strings, Let's just make sure that you back the hand off a little bit and you give yourself some space. A good rule of thumb is that you never have anything touching the neck of your guitar other than the thumb tip and your fingertips. So it kind of excludes your palm resting on the neck at all. We don't always do this when we play, but it is something we want to make sure we work on at home. So as I'm playing through, I want to be, be aware of the tips of my fingers, if they're actually coming down or if I'm flattening out. Again, we want up, over, and down, even on the pinky, even on the first finger. When I get into the plain strings, I just want to make a mental note that I need to pull my hand away from the guitar also to accommodate the movement that my fingers are about to have to make. So that's a, a very simple thing to do in my left hand. Let's move back to the right hand to talk about how we're picking through this exercise. Um, a friend of mine, outside of uh, my music school experience, started watching my right hand as I was playing, and he noticed that where I'd, I'd worked on my down and my up, and I had a downstroke and an upstroke happening, I could alternate pick. I couldn't alternate pick without keeping my hand against the guitar. And I think a lot of it had to do with my dad played guitar and his pinky literally never left his pick guard. So I adopted that and that's how I played. Um, it was uncomfortable for me to play without touching the guitar. I needed my pinky, maybe even my ring finger to kind of hold my hand in place. And as I'm alternate picking or as I'm playing through the strings, sometimes I'm stretching, sometimes I'm not. So my hand is kind of in a different movement or a different position based on where I'm playing. Also, I kind of used it, it helped me pick, um, it kind of gave me some strength or some support as I'm playing through maybe strings a little faster. And I could just keep my fingers against the pick guard to help me reference where I'm at. Another side of that is I would keep my palm engaged on the strings that I'm not playing. So this together it was just a recipe for not being able to move around as quickly as I should. And he kind of pointed that out to me. And his challenge to me was to not touch the guitar at all. Um, to keep my fingers up in a natural position, kind of close to what my first finger has holding the pick. And to pick through each note without needing to touch the guitar. So this pick movement, now that I don't have my, my fingers to help me out, felt a little weird. And the way I like to think of it is if your pick is a key and you're putting a key in a lock, you want to think of picking down and up in the same way that you would turn the, uh, the lock inside of the doorknob. Or if you're cranking your car or unlocking your car, same type of motion, where it's not really rotating my wrist from completely up to completely down. And it's also not rotating from the elbow, but it's a, it's a little bit of both, but it's really similar to just unlocking a door. And that's where my down and my up will come from. So in doing this, and trying to remember that there's an imaginary line at the bottom of my neck pickup, and trying to remember that before I even play, just touch my pick against the string to see if I'm flat, if I'm up, or if I'm angled back or angled down. I just want to make sure that I'm going to have a positive contact with the tip of my pick flat against the string going down and going up so that it's a uniform sound. I also want to remember that 
my motion is like turning that key down and up. And you can really hear it if you just mute your guitar and you don't play an open note, but you play a muted note. We're just looking for a similar attack in both down and up. Another thing that I'm doing to get that is I don't rest the pick against the string before I actually play it, or else I'm kind of coming from a muted place and the only sound is when the pick clears the string, rather than the sound of the pick hitting the string, which I think has a better attack. So remembering that, remembering that it's like turning the lock, remembering that I'm not touching the guitar, and I know this is very difficult, it took me a long time to break that habit, that I'm not trying to keep my hand against the guitar here. So I'm kind of floating, remembering in my left hand that I've got my fingertips engaged, and I'm trying to give myself room when I get to the plain strings. I just want to play through this minor pentatonic scale. here is each note has a clear and clean attack. When it's not heavily affected, it's, it's not as, as noticeable, but by the time you add a little bit more of an effect, let's say I go to a bigger reverb, and let's say I go to a different delay. When I've got that kind of sound going on, actually having a cleaner attack is going to make my notes pop out in a mix way better. So that's just a basic way to get started in an alternate picking habit. Um, utilizing the tips of my fingers to produce my notes in my fretted hand and re removing my hand from the guitar and making sure my pick is upright and I'm moving down and up with my pick flat against the string when it hits in order to achieve a more uniform sound and one that sticks out inside of a mix. One last thing in the left hand also to watch out for is this type of thing. And whenever we're making left hand adjustments, and whenever I'm making left hand adjustments, for some reason I feel the need to compensate. And I'll notice that my wrist starts to drop down. And this is something that in the long run is actually gonna be really painful. Uh, that's how that tennis elbow will develop. So as you're trying to get these fingertips in order, watch out for this wrist dropping down. And what we wanna look for is that it's just a very natural, natural look. Um, if I notice that it's down, I just gently want to pick it up. And if I'm having trouble keeping my fingers aligned, keeping them with the up over down movement, keeping the tips down, and keeping my wrist from bending this way, I can simply remove my thumb and reposition and then place the thumb wherever it's at. So this is usually due to a habit of thumb placement on the back of the neck, and it's not really aligning with the new way we want to do it of placing the fingertips down with the up, over, and down movement. So that's just a little trick to um, help you out. Uh, in the next video, I'm gonna be talking a little more in detail about specific exercises that I actually use to develop my playing style and more effective ways to practice. So if you haven't yet, make sure to click the link below, enter your email address so we can send you part two of this video.